Alright, so if you've watched a Hive YouTuber in the past week, or for that matter, even just played on the Hive in the past week, you've noticed that custom servers are all rage right now. I'm no exception to this at all, and while I haven't really been making my own custom servers that much, I've been playing on my friends' custom servers a lot. I've been recording most of the times that I've been playing on these custom servers, and in this video, I'm going to tell you guys what you can expect from playing on custom servers, and just show you guys some of the highlights of me playing on custom servers. This is the Hive Custom Server Experience. So like I said, I'm going to tell you guys what you can expect from playing on custom servers. If you join a random custom server that someone's advertising in the Hive lobby, chances are it's going to be one of two things. It'll be a free shop solo treasure wars lobby if you join a sweat, which just ends up being diamond sword, armor, and snowball simulator. This isn't necessarily a bad thing because this can be used to get Hive 1v1s, which wasn't really a thing we had beforehand, we just kind of had sumos and that's about it. It's kind of nice being able to play on your own private world with Hive knockback and everything. The other game mode you can probably expect to play if you join a random lobby is death run with no jump cooldown. I mean, I'll say it's pretty fun actually to just jump around in death run, but I would assume it gets pretty boring if you're just constantly speedrunning the same maps over and over again with no jump cooldown. If you're decent at the game, you can literally get through a course in like 30 to 40 seconds. Another game mode that you would expect to see fairly frequently on the Hive is sumo. Sumo is fighting other players without any weapons just to try and see who can get the best combos. And you frequently see this in Treasure Wars. However, because Solo Treasure Wars still has a team limit, you actually see custom server sumos in survival games now. I don't have any footage of it personally because I haven't played in it, but I'm not surprised because Hive players do really like their sumos. Now speaking of survival games, you can actually do really big survival games games now in custom servers. The maximum amount of players you can have in a Hive Plus custom server lobby is 30, but if you're a Hive partner, your games can go up to 50 players. And I'll personally say that this is the most fun I've ever had on survival games on the Hive just because it's basically double the players you get in a normal game. I've always kind of complained about survival games being super slow and there really aren't that many fights because there aren't enough players for the size of the map, but in games with 50 players, you're almost constantly fighting people, which makes it super fun. It's also super hilarious to change the deathmatch settings to having like the max amount of players you can have in a deathmatch, which is something like 20, and it's such a rush when you actually win one of those games and best all 20 people that are in such a small place. I'll say as a general rule that I do like the base game modes more than the custom games, but honestly, I've been having a lot of fun with survival games, custom games, and might be starting to like it more than base survival games. Oh yeah, it's also fun to play survival games when people actually have a brain as opposed to the lobbies being like 75% mobile players when you're just playing in normal games. Potato pie is gonna win. Oh, it's Tuck. Tuck. <laughs> Tuck, you're undergeared. No way! Potato pie just cleaned him up. Another game that's surprisingly fun to play, at least a little bit, is Hide and Seek. Now, assuming you're in a lobby with people that actually know what they're doing playing Minecraft, the first order of business, assuming that you're a hider, is to go combo and just generally bully the Seeker. Like, there's 20 of you and one or two of the Seeker, which means that if there's 10 people just trying to constantly combo and punch the Seeker, they're really not going to be able to do anything. It's essentially free combo practice and it's actually hilarious. Eventually though, someone will just take one too many hits and they'll become a Seeker and it just snowballs into there being more and more Seekers, but in 99% of the games, the Hiders should still win just because there are so many of them and not enough Seekers. Also in these custom lobbies, there's bound to be someone who's actually played hide and seek enough to the point where they know all the glitch spots the Hiders can't get them, and so like I said, it should be an easy win for the hiders. Now, on to Sky Wars. There really isn't that much to say about it. I think the cause of it is that there really isn't 
that much that fundamentally changes the game in the custom controls. You can change or spawn rates and toggle a few things on and off, but there really isn't that much to change. I think this is most of the reason why I haven't been having that much fun with Skywars custom games, but I mean, I know some people do really enjoy it, so to each their own, I guess. There's also Just Build, but I haven't seen anyone play Just Build in a custom server at all. I'm sure it's happened, but I haven't seen it. I haven't seen anyone talk about it. I haven't seen anyone play it, so we don't talk about Just Build, okay? Assuming you've got enough people to do a Just Build custom lobby, you've got enough to just queue into a game anyways, so that's probably part of the reason why I haven't seen that many Just Build games. Either way, the final game mode that I've played in custom games is Murder Mystery. It seems like it would be very straightforward, just essentially Among Us in Minecraft, and I actually did that, and I'll get to that in a little bit. However, I think Murder Mystery as a custom game is actually pretty versatile. You can kind of stack the games in favor of who you want, either in the murderers or the sheriffs, or even the innocents if you make a lot of them and spawn a lot of coins. And that's fun for a few rounds, but it gets kind of boring after a while. However, we played actual Among Us in Murder Mystery with multiple groups of friends, and it's been actually super fun. Some of my friends have uploaded videos that I've been in. I haven't uploaded any of mine, and I'm not entirely sure if I will yet, but I do encourage you guys to try and play Among Us in Minecraft Murder Mystery. It's pretty fun. All you have to do is just search Among Us Minecraft skin, make up some rules for your squad, and you're good to go. Be sure to share it with me if you end up doing this and make a video out of it, because I'm really interested to see what other people have done with it as well. So, custom servers on the Hive are probably one of the greatest things that the Hive has ever added. I've had great times messing around with friends and playing games with fans, and it's just been a great time all around. So, thank you Hive, I really appreciate it. So, with that being said, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on if you'd like to know when I post new videos or go live. I've been streaming about three times a week and posting new videos about two times a week for the past few weeks, and so if you want to be one of the first to catch them, notifications is probably your best way to do that. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.